Let's try this out. To find where F ends up, we need to know where E ends up, right? Wherever that ends up. To find where that ends up, we need to know where these two points end up, you know? So we ultimately need to find this change in length, the change in, uh, let's call it A, B. We need to find the change in length of, uh, what is the CD? Which will tell us the change in length of E, which we can use, which we can add to the change in length of F, E. Right, because these are all being stretched. These are all getting longer. All right, we got this free body diagram. Uh, go in here, and we know the Young's modulus, we know all these dimensions, so we'll be using these to plug in our equations. Um, so let's start off by talking about a strain, right? Whenever we think about something uh, being yanked or compressed or having forces on it, um, it's undergoing stress, it's also undergoing strain. Strain is has to do with that change in, in length has to do with the uh, dimensions changing. So whenever we um, we're trying to find a like a a distance, we can think about strain. So um, strain uh, is change in length over the original length. For fanciness purposes, we're going to call we're going to use this little this little jump jump to uh, to signify the change in length. So we really want to find this guy. This is the change in length is what we're interested in. So we want to use the strain equation to find this change in length. So if we just do some rearranging, we know that boom, bang, bang. We also have Young's modulus, right? Which is equivalent to the ratio of stress over strain. So if we plug this boy into this boy, do some rearranging, then we end up getting this guy, right? And uh, we know that the stress is just like P over A. So all of this equates to this beautiful equation that we're, is going to carry us through this problem. Um, and by the way, uh, the P is, is the force, and L is the length, and A is the cross-sectional area, and E is Young's modulus. Um, PL over A. We're going to start by finding the change in length of this first segment. <clears throat> it's PL over AE. So there's this P, the length, which the P is unknown right now, but we do know the length it's given us in the problem. It's uh, six feet. Let's change that to inches. We know the cross-sectional area. That's one square inch, and we know the material. It's that titanium. So we need to find out the P or the force that we need to we need to find P, the force that the member in question is being subjected to. We need to use some uh, equations of equilibrium. So we can start by taking the moment about C, but a bing, but a boom. Um, and we know that it has a component uh, from P, which is two feet away from C. And it has a component um, from RAB, which is three feet away from it. Right? And we can also sum the moments in the x direction. We don't have to worry about the y because there's no vertical forces. We got, we got this boy, we got this boy, and we got this boy. So once we do some rearranging, we can discover that RAB, top boy, it's 38,000 uh, pounds, and RCD is 19,000 pounds, right? Uh, so now we know the change in length uh, of point A, or the bar A, the bar AB. Uh, let's do it again for uh, the change in length of the bar CD. So we know that uh, PL over AE the P in this case is is uh, 19, uh, and most of the things are the same. It's the same length here. It's the same material, just the thickness is a little bit bigger. So we get a number that looks like this. Bam. Uh, however, you'll notice that the change in length of the bar A is greater than the change in length of the bar C. So we're going to end up with a kind of a, a, a slanted Right, this top part of the bar is going to move more than the bottom part, so it's going to be slanted. It's kind of a bitch because you know if this is the old bar, old placement of the bar, when the top moves more than the bottom, we're going to end up with this slant. And you know the game plan was to find 
uh, the change in length of, of where E ends up. Um, and now, the fact that the bottom and top is not the same uh, same distance has complicated that for us. Because if they were the same distance, then E would also be the same distance. But now we have to find like, I don't know, we have to find like this weird triangle. I right, so we need to find like this portion and add it to this portion to get how much E has moved. So we can do that with uh, similar triangles. So these are the similar triangles we're working with. Right, we got a uh, got big boy right here. Got little boy right here. So if we do some equating, we can uh, look like this. So we do some rearranging, and we'll find that DE is dun dun da da dun da da. -da. And find out that the change in length of point E, where point E ends up, where it moves to, is 0.122 inches to the left. But I mean, but a boom. So now we know where point E has moved to. And now we just got to add that to how much the bar FE is going to stretch. Right? Because now that we know where E, this, this new bar has ended up, um, we just need to add the stretch of the remaining piece and that's going to be the total change in length due to um, this force P. So we can, uh, luckily we can use the same equation PL over AE. Our P this time is the, the full P. Uh, length is two feet. You know, these are all numbers that we get from the problem uh, explicitly and that adds up to 0 0.0393 this is inches so what we have now is this new position it's like that so ultimately F used to be right here now F is right here it has moved a certain length due to point E changing and it's moved a certain length due to the stretch of the bar that is being yanked. So if we add up our results, which were 0 0.0393 from the stretch of bar EF, and we add 0.122 to that, which is um, how much point E has shifted, then we will get a beautiful number, which is 0.162 inches.